Okay, so the end of the last video, and I said that when you added 5 to the x or a constant to just the x, you're going to have a left or right movement. In this case, um, we added 5, we have a left movement of 5 units. Remember, I'm adding 5 to just the x, where before, in example 1, I added a constant or a 5, I would have added 5 to the end, that's an up or down movement. But this 5 is inside that square root with the x, so that's a left or right movement. So let's go ahead and start by graphing a common graph, the square root of x, which you can memorize or go ahead and plot the, make a table in your head. So 0, 0, 1, 1, um, square root of 4. So x is 4, square root of 4 is 2. So there is the f of x function. And then I'm shifting it to the left 5 units. So I'm taking every one of those points. And that's why, again, it's important to plot these points because you're going to use those points to shift. In this case, I'm shifting 5 units to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would be right there. Okay. 5 to the left here would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right there. And then here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right there. So this right here would be the g of x function. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there. And that doesn't look really nice. I'm going to go ahead and redraw that. It looks kind of weird. So, yeah, that looks a little better. Okay. So if this function right here moved to the left 5 units. Now, at this point, when I'm in class, I teach this, usually my students will ask me, how come if I added 5, I didn't shift that to the right 5? So a lot of students will think, okay, add 5, positive 5, you go in the positive direction. And so I always try to prove why we do this. So I'm going to go ahead and open another document. If you're in my class right now, watch this video. You don't have to copy this down. Just kind of listen and then see why this works. So what I did here is I'm going to go ahead and pull up a blank piece of graph paper and erase this over here. I'll have old graph paper here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and look at those two functions again. I had f of x uh, f of x equals the square root of x and then I had g of x equals the square root of the quantity x plus 5. So let's say we didn't know about shifting up or down, left and right. Let's just say we're just going to make a table and figure this out, um, what the graph looks like. That would have been what we did before we started this section. Remember, f of x is just y. Okay, and then we have another table for the g function. So if I pick in value, I'm going to go ahead and do um, the f of x function black. So I have value to pick for x, so square root of 0, which is 0. So 0, 0 is a point. So 1, 1 is a point. And I hope you understand why I picked four again, why well, pick four here because square root of four is a really nice number. If I had gone on to the number two here, that would have been the square root of two, which is some ugly decimal. I really don't want to plot um, a coordinate that's a decimal. Okay. If I can even do more, um, f of nine would be the square root of nine, which would be three. So nine three would be another point. Again you can do it forever. Okay, but I think on a common graph we stopped at four because we didn't have dollar graph paper. And then I'll do the other graph. Um, I think I did it in blue um, on the other sheet, so it keeps in blue. And here I'm going to be really careful. If I put in 0 here, I would put 0 here, and I would get the square root of 5. The square root of 5 is really ugly. It's a decimal, 2.23606797. Do I really want to plot that for my y value? Not really. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the value negative 5. Because if I put negative 5 in there for x, what happens is I get the square root of negative 5 plus 5, which is the square root of 0, which we know is just 0. So negative 5, 0. 
Then I'm going to go ahead and find the next nice, nice number, which would be um, negative 4. So if I put negative 4 in there, I get negative 4 plus 5 under the square root, which is the square root of 1, which is 1. So negative 4, 1 would be a great point to plot. And then I look here and I go, I want to make this, um, this value of 4 under here, which I already, um, to do that, I would do a negative 1. The g of negative 1 would give me the square root of negative 1 plus 5, which is the square root of 4, which is just 2. And then um, I would go ahead and do 4, because... 4 plus 5 is 9 under the square root, which is 3. So this is a long way of doing it. Again, the reason why we learn about these um, these transformations is because we don't want to do these tables. But I, I would do the table just to prove why that transformation goes to the to the left 5 versus to the right 5 in the last example. Let's draw a graph here. So we're going to compare this graph to example two. Example two, we just looked at the graph and we just transformed. But now we're going to go ahead and do this use a table. So I have these points here. I'm going to go ahead and plot these points in my common function. I'm going to plot those points right here. This right here is f of x. Then again, I had to do the table again here, but again, this is one of the common graphs you memorize. I'm hoping you do the table in your head. Okay. And then in blue, I'm going to go ahead and do these other points, I'll plot the other points. I have negative 5, 0. Right there. I have negative 4, 1. I have negative 1, 2. And then 4, 3. Okay. If you look at this very carefully, do you notice that this is the original function f of x equals square root of x? Do you notice, let me move this out of the way, do you notice that this right here, this point got moved 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So do you see that the original function, this is example 2, when I add 5 to just wherever the x is, I shift it to the left 5 units. Okay. So again, a lot of people want to move it to the right 5 units, but if I do it by hand, the long way, I end up shifting every point to the left 5 units. Okay. So let's go back to the the note. And so if you look at this example we just did, example two, again, this is the same problem I had on that other sh document there. This is square root of x, square root of x plus five. This is much easier to just realize I'm shifting this graph five units to the left. This is what we expect on the test. I don't expect you to make that table I just did. I only made that table to prove why I moved every point to the left five units. Okay? So go ahead and I want you to pause the video and I want you to go ahead and try this on your own problem. If you're in my in-person flip class, I know that a lot of y'all aren't doing the on your own problems. You leave those blank. So pause the video, do the problem. Then when you start the video up, you can check your answer. If it's wrong, then fix it. Okay? So go ahead and pause your video. Okay, so here I have the answer. In black I have that common function. This is a standard quadratic function. And then I shifted every uh, point to the right three units. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. And what I have in red is the, um, the g back function. So again, look at this function. The standard function has x squared. But notice that wherever x is odd, it would do minus three. And I still have it squared. So that minus three is with the x. It's not at the end of the function. So this is different than this. This would be an up or down move because I'm subtracting 3 to the end of the function. This is the minus 3 with just the x. Okay? 
So now we have other kind of um, transformations and um, we're not other kind of transformations. We're actually going to start combining. We'll do other transformations in just a second. So now we're going to start doing um, the combination. So what happens if I have a value added onto the x, but then I have a value added or subtracted at the end of the function? So I have a couple things going on there. What we're going to do is you want to look at the original function here. I have the square root or x squared. Let's go ahead and graph that real quick. We had it in the last example or last on your own problem. So that's this function right here. This is f of x. Now what I notice here is I notice I have a plus 1 where it, with the x. This means I'm going to have a left or right movement. So plus 1 means I'm going to move to the left, the shift to the left, 1 unit. Okay. This minus 3 at the end is going to be an up or down movement. In this case it's going to be down, the so shift down, 3 units. So what you're going to do is what you, you're going to do is you're going to always look at these problems. If you have more than one shift, what you want to do is you're going to want to do the um, left or right movement first, whatever is closest to the X. So we're going to do this movement first. So we're going to look at shifting everything to the left one unit. So I'm going to do that in purple again. I'm take all these points and going to the left one unit. Then I'm going to take all those points on this purple graph and I'm going to shift it down three units. So I'm going to take these points on the purple graph, that point, that point, that one, that one, and that one, I'm going down three units. So what I have here, this is your h of x function. This is the one that has all this happening to it. The one in purple is just an intermediate step. Okay. Any questions about that, make sure you email me or let me know. If you're in my class, we can, we can do more of these in class if you'd like for me to do so. Okay. Now another kind of uh, transformation we have is when we have a reflection about the x-axis. When you have a negative sign in front of the entire function, you're going to reflect it across the x-axis. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this function, the common function f of x equals the square root of x. So let's go down black. You know that I'm just doing these really quickly. I'm doing it in my head. I'm making the table in my head. 1, 1, 4, 2, so on. Okay, this is f of x equals the square root of x. If I see a negative sign, now here's my other function, g of x equals negative square root of x. Notice how I put a negative sign in front of the entire function right here. That means you're going to reflect it across the x-axis. Here's the x-axis. I'm going to take all the points, I'm going to do this in a different color. All these points are going to get reflected across the x-axis. So this point right here, reflected across the x-axis will be right here. This point will be right there. And this point is on the x-axis, so it doesn't really reflect all. This will be right there. So what I have here in orange is your g of x function. Why does that work? Because you're taking your value, your because g of x equals y. You're taking all your y values and making them negative. So all your y values just get negative. Okay? Okay. What happens when you put the negative sign in front of just the x? I'm getting ready to run out of time here, so I'll start the next video with that question. So um, go ahead, I'm going to stop the video, and we'll start example 5 in the next part.